Hey, praise God and co-fish everybody. Charlie Burr here on a hot, hot, hot East Texas day. Uh, thank you all for turning in, tuning in to the uh, YouTube channel here. Hey, if you've been watching and you like what you see and you have not subscribed, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It helps me out. It helps, uh, hey, I'm not going to lie, the more people that subscribe and watch, um, it helps keep this thing going. It helps finance uh, my hobby here. But anyway, back over here on uh, East Texas Lake, no can tell. And uh, first of all, I just want to say I read all the comments. And uh, I've been getting comments uh, for prayer um, more. Man, I, I, hate, I just hate seeing people going through tough times. And uh, there's three or four of y'all out there that have asked for prayer and I'm sure I prayed for you this morning I pray for all of y'all every day um, now I'm not gonna lie there's days that life uh, gets me sidetracked and at the end of the day I say man I, f I forgot to to lift up my friends and family in prayer but uh, more times than not I do and for you guys that are uh, going through tough time health wise and and um, just sickness in your family and all Man, I'm, I want you to know that, that me and several are, are praying for y'all. Uh, you know, why, why, did we, why did we pray? I, have you ever asked yourself, why, why does God have us pray? I know I've asked that question to myself. You know, God knows, certainly knows my thoughts. Uh, he knows my words before I speak them. But why does he want us to pray? Well, prayer is a form of communication. And... I like to think I know a thing or two about communication. I, uh, excuse me for wiping, man, it is hot out here. I've got the umbrella up. But, uh, yeah, I know a thing or two about communication. I was a telephone man for 40 years. I, uh, I put, back in the 70s, I, I pulled telephone cables into the manholes, hung them on poles, spliced them, put them in businesses and homes, and back then, a lot of you guys that are my age, you, you know what I'm talking about, but some of you, some of you young guys, you whippersnappers, you haven't got a clue. You've never seen these things. But telephones back in my day, uh, they plugged in. Everything was by wire. had to be connected by wire. Uh, you had a copper wire that left that phone, went into the, into the house wiring, into the cable, into the central office, and... Uh, you were connected by cable and as antiquated as that was it still amazes me today that um, we were able man was able to, to create you know a, a system like that where they they can take our voice and turn it into frequency and and through digital or analog shoot it through the lines and you can speak it, it goes through the lines and it comes out on the other end a thousand miles away and people hear your voice. It still amazes me how, you know, we could do that. Oh, and back then, man, we had telephones. You had to put your finger in a dial and turn it, you know. And um, if you lived out in the country, man, if you lived in the country, you didn't even have a private line. You had a party line. And uh, I had some kids asked me one day said party line what, what's that man like everybody everybody gets on the line and like parties I, <laughs> no no so you old older guys explain it to those young ones but uh, one cool thing we had and that was uh, it was for the hearing impaired and it was a uh, device that they if a person was hard of hearing it would print the conversation out on a little screen and uh, I was installing one of those one day. Little, this is a little side story to my story time. But uh, I was putting a, a, one of those uh, hearing impaired devices in for, uh, let's call her Miss Brown, for Miss Brown, who was uh, hearing impaired. And I got it all hooked up and ready for a test drive. And she said, well, uh, she said, call my husband at work. So we called her husband, and he answered the phone and said hello, and man, it printed out hello. And I said, Mr. Brown, telephone man here, and I'm just doing some work at your house, and, 
and uh, we're just giving it a test run here and everything he said it printed out perfect on the screen man it was amazing and uh, a little bit into the conversation before we hung up um, Miss Brown uh, leaned over and, and whispered told me to to ask him something and I don't even remember what what it was and so I asked him the question and his first reply was well that crazy dizzy headed blankety blank woman I'm married to and man it printed out word for word blankety blank and I was like oh Dude, you are you are in so much trouble. And Miss Brown says, she looked at that screen and she just paused and she said, "Oh no, he didn't." <laughs> I said, uh, "Yes, he did." I said, "Mr. Brown," I said, uh, "Hey, uh, I said you may you may want to stay late at the office like for like maybe the next three days." <laughs> but but man, we had some fun with I had some fun as a telephone man back in those days. And you know, as, uh, as things uh, evolved and, and now man, now you pick up a telephone and it's like a computer. I mean, back in my day, Dr. Uh, I'm not Dr. Spock, uh, Captain Kirk was the only one with a cell phone back in my day. But nowadays we have these, these computers, these cell phones that are like little computers and you can do everything on them. And it's, it's just amazing. It's amazing. It's wireless. That's even more amazing. But, um, you know, where I'm going with this is communication and com communicating with the Lord. You know, God, praise God, if, if man can come up with a, a way of communicating with each other, like telephones and, and the technology that we have created, well, doesn't it stand to reason that, that God has a communication system that ours would pale in comparison to. And you know, in, in, in my day, uh, if you called somebody and they were on the phone, you got a busy signal. Then we got the call waiting. And nowadays, you know, you can have two or three people on the, on the same line, kind of like the old party line days. But, um, you know, technology has just gone crazy. The things that we could do, how much more can God do his ways Bible says his ways are above far above our ways and you know the good thing is God never you never get a busy signal when you call God you never get a uh, your call is important to us all of our technicians or all of our people are busy right now please hold in the next available agent will will handle your call you don't get that when you call on God He's always there, 24-7. He's always there. He's always listening. How easy do you think it would be to, uh, if you could even find the number to the White House, to call the White House and say, hey, I, I need to talk to old Joe. How easy do you think it would be to talk to uh, Vladimir Putin, any of the leaders in, in the world, as high and mighty as they are, how easy would it be for me to call and say, hey, this old Charlie Goldfish, I need to talk to uh, President Biden here a minute. That ain't gonna happen, I can tell you. But, um, you know, God, the creator of all, man, we've got a straight line to him. Never busy, never gonna get a call uh, answering service. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna get to talk to the man. You can talk to, and he will hear you. And you know, I like to, I like to, I guess, compare it like, like this. I've got, uh, I've got two, two girls, and when they were little, you know, they, um, they could come in from a hot summer day like this, after playing hard in the yard, and man, they're just ringing wet and got the sweat and dirt running down the side of their face, and before they spoke a word I can tell you Miss Pam or me had already got them a, a cool pop or a glass of their favorite fruit juice or whatever we we were gonna meet 
their need. We were going to give them what they needed right then before they asked. But then there were other times that maybe it was uh, getting close to bedtime and they would come and, and they would uh, they'd crawl up in my lap, you know, and they'd want, they'd maybe want, they'd crawl up in my lap if they wanted some candy because, you know, daddy would give it to them. But, um, you know, they would, they would crawl up in, in my lap and begin a conversation of, of how they, they wanted something. And because I love them and because their mama wasn't in the room, I'd let them have that M&M, little package of M&Ms or, or uh, those uh, Starburst, whatever they were. But, you know, not comparing us to God, but, you know, uh, we're like the children. We're like to God like our children are to us. God wants that conversation with us. And he's going to give you, God's going to give you, uh, you know, the Bible says that if we delight ourselves in the Lord, then he'll give us the desires of our heart. And I believe that. I've seen it too many times. But, uh, but God wants to have that conversation. He's going to give, he's going to give me what I need. But there's times that I need to crawl up in his lap and tell him, what's on my heart just have that conversation that's all he wants that conversation man how much you, you guys that are that are dads you know how much you love it when when your kids just want to hang out and talk to you and uh, they're not asking for anything they just they, they just want to talk and that's all god wants so guys let me encourage you man don't put it off get that relationship with god man crawl up in his lap tell him what you need um now don't go and go and tell him you want that new live scope <laughs> But I, hey, but I do believe it could happen. You, you never know. He does exceedingly, abundantly above whatever we could ask or think. Amen. Well, guys, I am burning up out here. But I just love fishing. I just love fishing. So uh, I got a late start, man, as, as usual. But I got this umbrella up. I'm going to show you my setup here sometime today. If you, if you are fishing this time of year... You got that, man, you have got to have an umbrella if you're an old dude like me. But uh, let's turn around, find some fish, and get the sling and some slabs. Let's go fish. All right, guys, here we go. I, uh, I got all the way out here, did my intro, got ready to uh, go fish, and uh, looked down, I left the ice chest in the truck, and a you got to have a nice chest this time of year. You can't keep these fish alive. Guess got to catch them first, though. But um, back out here. Hey, I'm getting I'm getting started before noon. It's, tw it's 11.44. Somebody asked me uh, how I go about finding these fish. Um, well, I use the same strategy on any lake. I've gone to lakes that I went to Toledo Bend uh, last year place I'd never fished, never seen. Went out there and uh, caught a limited fish, but what I do, y'all know I like structure. I don't like brush piles, but I love timber. So the first thing I do, I look for the uh, the channel, wherever the channel is, whether it's Toledo Bend or League of the Pines, I look for the uh, the old river channel. And I just concentrate on the, uh, on the timber next to the, uh, to the channel. Now, uh, certainly you want to pay, you know, close attention to sharp bends in the river and things like that. But uh, some lakes, like Lake Nocantel here, um, it doesn't have a defined, it's a small lake, doesn't have a defined uh, bottom uh, channel to it. So I just look for deep water and uh, timber, flood timber. You can find that on, on your Navionics map that I showed in one of my videos. Just go to your, your app store and get a Navionics boating lakes. Um, download that, it's about $10 for the year. And you can uh, get you a strategy the night before you go fishing. Anyway, uh, I think I'm within striking range here. Let's, let's get a drop going just to see. Dig. Kind of ease it down through there. Had one bump it. He's not 
really sure, is he? Just taking it from him. Now this is not my, uh, I don't have a hair jig on here. It's what I like to start out with. I, I've just got some plastic on here. I'll be changing it. I'm gonna do a drop and stop. There was, oh, he was on there for a minute. He liked that sudden approach. Free meal. Let's try him again. Find my jig. Drop it down. Okay, let's change bait. See them popped it two or three times. They may want this later on. Started out, uh, had a brush glider on there. They've been, been hitting it, but they didn't want it. So I put this little old bait on. Where is it? The sun is so bright, I can't, can't really see anything. Hopefully you see that. Uh, we're gonna take that off and put a uh, hair jig on. Just kind of a, uh, some people call it a gray ghost. It's uh, I'm gonna put something with a gray body, natural looking. Love that little jig case there. Hey, if you're around Shreveport, Louisiana, go by uh, the crappie shop over on, uh, it's over off Piermont. Look him up on the internet, old Howard. And uh, go by, he just uh, started handling some some gear for us crappie fishermen. And boys, he's got it looking good. He's got everything for from uh, plastic baits, bonehead baits, um, ACC rods, bonehead rods, uh, just a little, Little gray body, chartreuse tail, brown head. Let's see what it'll do. Got lots of baits. Fishing with the uh, ACC mid seat right now. Uh, I love it. I like the rear seat's my favorite though, that crossover with the super grips. Ooh, I love it. Finally, come on up, dude. Finally, 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 broke the ice. On that little hand tie I make, uh, silver chartreuse tail. Not nothing to brag about. What am I doing? Putting them in the ice chest today. All right. One down. 24 to go. Man, nothing like <coughs> summertime sniffles. One moving. Oh man, he was just same old thing, just barely nipping it. Umbrella does make it a little tough. Get the fish out. Oh, 
those are smaller fish there. Oh god, I did not want to catch him. But I'll come back and see me in a few years. Let's see where he goes. There he is. I'm wanting to get down to these guys over here. All right, guys, uh, as I suspected, expected, it's hot, and the uh, cameras got hot and shut down. So I went around and fished for a little bit, just finally, now, found some decent fish. I was catching fish at the other end of the lake, but uh, they weren't that big. The last two I've caught here, good fish. Plus, none of my hair jigs worked. None of my favorite boneheads worked. Everything I tried didn't work. I said, well, what would Miss Pam do if she was here with me? There's the answer. I used these years. I oh, started using these about three years ago. But uh, they're good baits. Bobby Garland slab slayers. Uh, I don't get anything from them other than uh, catching fish. But th it's a good bait. Now, it catches fish, but it tears up real easy. That's what I don't like about it. It's not like a bonehead. It, this thing tears up. But it's pretty consistent, uh, this electric chicken here. Now, I did something a little bit. I tweaked it a little bit. Something else I have to do when these fish get picky, and they are real picky today. And there's a lot of people out, and uh, they're not having much success. All right, you know I use these little keepers right here? Look what I put in the keeper. Got me a little spinner. And let me see who's calling. Oh, that's a monster right there. That is a, that is a monster. Oh man, don't leave, please, please. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, he got off. Oh no. Oh man. Let's check the hook. Man, my heart's beating, y'all. Hook is not too bad straight. He went back to the tree and they will bite again sometimes. Don't think they won't. I don't want to miss him again. Big fish, take two. Big fish, take three. Oh, come on up, don't get off, please. Oh, he's a dandy. Don't get off, oh, don't get off. Stay with me, big boy. Ah! Oh, look at that. Look at that. Ah, come here, bud. Ah, man. I did not want to lose him. Golly. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys. You see me dressed like this.
I can only mean one of two things. Either I'm headed to Walmart or I'm getting ready to clean some fish. Well, I did the Walmart thing the other day, so uh, I'm getting ready to clean some fish. Show you what we did yesterday. Well, let me back up. I said what we did yesterday. It was just me. Miss Pam, she had to work. Had some nice fish, uh, a little over 15 inches. Had a, had a few of those, uh, but it was a tough bite yesterday. Real tough. I, uh, I tried, good grief, I tried everything. I had bait scattered all over the deck of my boat. I tried hair jigs, I tried plastics. I didn't try shiners. I don't do shiners uh, anymore. Uh, I enjoyed the, the, the challenge, but I will show you what I, what I caught them on, what finally started working. All right, this was the deal right here. Um, Miss Pam's bait, Bobby Garland, three inch slab slayer. And uh, that's just a uh, cheap Walmart jig head. That's what she had, had been using. So I just picked it up and grabbed it. But I did one little modification. If you will look here on that, um, no fish is slimy. I used a little uh, fast snaps right there and put a, uh, a little willow leaf spinner blade in there. And that thing would clatter against the uh, that little metal fast snap. Of course, it would flutter. And uh, I tried with, excuse me, I tried with and without it. And uh, there was definitely a better bite when I put the uh, put the little willow leaf in there. So, hey, that's a little helpful hint that y'all can try when the bite gets really tough and you don't know what else to do. Don't just keep doing the same thing. Uh, swap it up. That's what I did yesterday. I haven't used that little spinner blade in over a year. I put that on and uh, I can tell you, I started putting a few fish in the boat. Anyway, I'm gonna get to knocking the bark off these guys. Until next time, God bless, go fish.